In this video, we'll be putting everything together that we've gone over in the last three videos to create the CR3BP propagator class in Python, solve the differential equations of motion, and plug in some initial conditions in two and three dimensions that produce some very interesting trajectories. And if you'd like to experiment on your own with the software, it is under the Astronomics with Python repository, SRC, Python tools, and CR3BP.py, as well as the unit tests, are, which are in the unit test folder, test CR3BP. We'll start with a use case of the CR3BP class, which is a plot creating five CR3BP orbits, each with the initial conditions of the five Lagrange points with their X positions slightly modified, and then we'll go over the CR3BP class implementation. So to start over here, we import CR3BP, which contains a class as well as CR3BP systems dictionary. We define some variables for the Lagrange points four and five, and then create five initial state vectors for the Lagrange points. And we'll be deriving the Lagrange points in the next video, so I don't want to spend any time on it here, but there are five Lagrange points which all have zero velocity in the rotating reference frame. We create an instance of the CR3BP class, stating that we want it to be the Earth-Moon system, set the time span and a list of initial state vectors, and then for each initial state, modify the X position, then pass that into the CR3BP propagate orbits method, which takes in the initial state and a time span and outputs the simulation times and the solver used and the states at those times. And note that we are using an adaptive step size solver, so we don't pass in a time step, instead we pass in relative and absolute tolerances. And when the for loop is done, we create the plot and we'll be going over this function later in this video. Now for the CR3BP class, we start with a constructor which only takes in one argument, which is the system. And this can be a string, where if it's a string, it has to be one of the keys in the CR3BP systems dictionary. If not, it will error. If it's not a string, it means that you're passing in your own CR3BP system dictionary that is not predefined here. And of course, this is a very weak test. If you could get an error if you didn't input it right. So it's assuming that the user knows what the constructor is expecting. And next is a differential equation method which like the spacecraft class takes in the simulation time and state and outputs the derivative of the state. We define R13 and R23 vectors here using the mu parameter and then calculate the gradient of the potential vector, which those variables are named omega x, omega y, and omega z. Then we create the derivative vector, fill in the values and return it. Then we have the propagate orbit method, which this is where it gets different from the spacecraft class. If you've seen that implementation on this channel and on the GitHub repository, where in the spacecraft class, we are modeling one spacecraft per instance of the class. Therefore, the propagate orbit is just called in the constructor in the constructor because there's nothing to modify in it. But here in the CR3BP class, in the constructor, we only define what system the instance is modeling. And then we can propagate as many orbits as we want in that system with that instance, which is exactly what's happening in the five Lagrange point script. We just keep calling the CR3BP propagate orbits method. And finally, we can plot either calling the plot2d or plot3d functions. Next are the plotting functions in plottingtools.py, which are pretty straightforward if you're familiar with the other implementations in this file and matplotlib. So we have a bunch of default arguments. We create the figure, plot the main two bodies using the mu parameter, plot the trajectories, and a bunch of other options. Again, pretty straightforward if you're, if you're familiar with 2D plotting with matplotlib. And the 3D version has more arguments, but it's basically doing the same thing, just three dimensions instead of two. It plots the trajectories, each time checking for the maximum value in the position arrays, plotting the main two bodies, any custom vectors that are passed in. The X, Y, Z rotating reference frame vectors are plotted with a quiver command. Set the axes, length, labels, starting azimuth and elevation angles if desired, and some more options. And finally, for the unit tests, one way to test a differential equation implementation is to plug in known periodic orbits of the CR3BP and assert that the initial state you passed in and the final state that was simulated are equal to some tolerance. So that's exactly what we're doing here. These periodic orbit initial states and time spans come from a paper written by P.W. Sharp in New Zealand, and I'll have a link in the description to that paper. So we set the tolerances, propagate the orbits, assert the Initial and final states are equal to some tolerance using the pytest.approx command and also assert that the end of the simulation was at the time that we expected it to be.
In the next video, we'll be going over the derivation of the Lagrange points, which occur when the velocity and acceleration of the spacecraft are equal to zero in the rotating reference frame, which occurs when the gradient of the pseudo-potential function is equal to zero, where the collinear Lagrange points actually need to be solved for using a root solver method, where we have four equations where two of them are redundant, giving us three collinear Lagrange points, where we see the three solutions in the plot in the top right here. So that's it for this video. Again, let me know if you have any questions or comments about the software because I went over it quickly and it's better to just talk about it if you have any questions about it because I think if you've seen the spacecraft class implementation, this is much more straightforward than that. But again, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.